All right, hey everyone. So this is a video showing how to fix the EverDrive 64. So it will work on the analog 3D because currently when you try to launch the EverDrive, it just shows a black screen and it doesn't actually launch on the analog 3D. And so Crix, the creator of the EverDrive, I think that's how you say his name, just came out with a new update which was really quick turnaround, by the way. Now, if you have an older uh, non X series cart, then all you have to do is just download the most recent firmware for your cart, which at the time recording this video is version 2.13. So yeah, just install that on your non X cart. However, if you have a X7 or any of the other X series, then you're gonna to wanna to follow this method in this video. So guys, if you like these videos, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. Let me know if you have any questions and let's get into it. Now, I just wanna mention this from the beginning. In order to update the EverDrive 64, uh, any of the X series, you will need an original Nintendo 64 if you don't want to do soldering. Uh, now the soldering is pretty easy. You just basically have to solder a resistor from a certain pin on the actual board inside the EverDrive 64 to ground. And so that's very easy to do. However, I don't want to have to go through the trouble of um, ordering the resistor and then waiting for it to come or going to a store and picking it up. And so since I have an original Nintendo 64, I'm just going to be doing it the easy way and just yeah the software way but just keep in mind that if you don't have access to an original Nintendo 64 then you will need to do the resistor method or and this is not ideal you um, any new EverDrive 64s that are being sold now will have the new bootloader come by default and so you could order a new one, but I obviously don't recommend that since they're pretty expensive. Or you could wait for analog to fix the analog 3D, but who knows when or if that will happen. But seriously, even if it's a friend's Nintendo 64, I highly recommend using an original console because this is much easier than soldering a resistor, even though the resistor, again, is not that hard. <laughs> So first off, I'm going to power off the console and disconnect the EverDrive 64. And we're going to take out the SD card here. And we're going to connect this to our computer. This is the tool that I'm using to connect my SD card to the computer. This is an old tool. I don't even know if they make these anymore. So if you need a tool to connect SD cards to your computer, I will leave a link to one that I think looks good in the description. Now, first off, you're going to want to update the operating system to whatever the latest version is. As of recording this video, the hotfix is uh, version 3.09, but if you're watching this video later, maybe it's a later version. Now, I'm not going to show you all the steps to update the OS right here because I've actually already made a video. <laughs> as you can see, I'm actually following my own video as a guide right now. I will leave a link to this video up above in the card, and I will also leave a link to it in the description. Okay, so once you have the new update files saved onto your SD card, again, following that other video that I made, then you don't want to eject your SD card quite yet because now you need to go to this website where you need to download a new bootloader for your EverDrive 64. And I will leave a link to this website in the description. But here is the bootloader. So I'm just going to download this and save it directly onto the root directory of my EverDrive 64. And uh, you can actually save it anywhere on the EverDrive 64. It doesn't have to be the root directory. I'm just going to save it here for convenience. And 
and I accidentally opened up the trash. <laughs> okay, there you go. So your SD card will no doubt look differently than mine, but somewhere on this root directory, if you're following my example, then you should have this new boot loader saved. So now I'm going to safely eject my SD card and then I am going to plug it back into the EverDrive 64. Okay, so now I have plugged the EverDrive 64 X7 into the original Nintendo 64. Again, this cannot be done on the analog. You have to use an original Nintendo 64. And now I'm going to turn the system on. This is a HDMI modded system that I did with the N64 Digital. Yeah. I'll leave a link to that video if you want to see that. That was the one that I it was a cool project I did a while ago. Anyways, so you can see the system settings have been reset to default. That's because we just barely updated the operating system. I'm actually still using this 8 bit N64 controller on the original Nintendo 64 using one of these blue retro adapters. Check out the previous video I did. Uh, explaining those. They're really cool devices and they work on Analog 64 as well. Alright, so now as you can see we have our files here and you can see we have this bootloader down at the bottom. So I'm just going to push A on this and then you can see it says install bootloader. So I'm going to push A again. And then once we're on this screen, you can see it says, do not turn off the power during the update. It may damage the cartridge. It is recommended to use only original N64 consoles for bootloader updates. And then press start to begin the update or any other button to cancel. So I'm going to push start. And as you can see, it is updating. There we go, that was pretty quick. So now I'm going to turn off the system as it says. We'll just turn it back on on the original hardware just to make sure it still boots. <laughs> All right, so there you can see it is booting on the original hardware. So now as you can see, I have it plugged into Analog 3D. It still shows up as unknown cartridge, but that's okay. All right, you can see that light flashing. And there you go, the EverDrive 64 is working on the Analog 3D. First off, I'm going to change the display mode to integer plus, so I like that better. It uh, gets rid of some of the overscan and also makes the screen bigger. So now let's uh, try going into a game here. Let's go into, let's see, Zelda Majora's Mask. This is the game I've been playing for a while, learning, trying to learn Japanese. Okay, so you can see, so far so good. And let's just go into my Al save file here. Okay, so yeah, you can see it is working as expected. Let's go ahead and try out one more game. Let's try out an unofficial game, or at least an unreleased game, I should say. <laughs> Dinosaur Planet. So this, I guess, would kind of be considered a ROM hack, but not exactly. Yeah, as you can see, it's working. So yeah, as you can see, this is working pretty good. This is just a cutscene right now in this Dinosaur Planet game. Let's go ahead and test out another game real quick. Let's go ahead and test out this beta version of Ocarina of Time. Yeah, so the nice thing about using the EverDrive 64 too is that my display settings are saved across uh, different games. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Whereas, you know, right now on the current firmware, the display settings are not saved across games. And so you have to set them individually for each game, which, you know, maybe that could be good if you want to have different graphic settings for whatever reason. However, I think most people just want to have the same settings for all games. That's what I want anyway. So yeah cool thing about the driver drive 64 is that it does have the same settings for all games because it's just saved the settings are saved for the EverDrive 64 now one thing I want to try real quick is let's go ahead and increase our rupee count because I want to see if the saving is still working 
Okay, so before we had 21, now there's 26. So I'm going to go ahead and save the game. I'm going to completely turn off the EverDrive. And let's load back into that game, turning it back on. Okay, I'm just going to push start on the screen to start the last game that I played. By the way, this OLED monitor that I'm playing on is really nice. <laughs> it's super bright too. I actually had to turn it down to like, I think it's on like, what, 20% right now brightness? Oh, 10% brightness, yeah. It's so bright. I actually had to turn it clear down to only 10% just so it, it would look decent on the camera because it was uh, overexposing <laughs> stuff. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'll leave a link for this monitor in the description as well. But as you can see, the saving is working. So if I see any other bugs that I, as I play around with this, then I'll let you all know. But as of right now, it seems like this has worked. So if you found this video useful, let me know everyone. And if you have any questions, let me know that as well. And if you're not subscribed, then I would appreciate if you did subscribe. I try to put out helpful videos like this, as well as just fun videos playing games. So yeah, if you're interested in these kind of videos, definitely consider subscribing and uh, leave comments down below. And what was the other thing? Comment, oh, and like, sure. <laughs> if you can like the video, that'd be great too. Or if you didn't like the video, then yeah, don't like it. Anyway, we will talk to you later. Thanks for watching everyone, bye. This is Fairy Kid 64 signing out.